and a very, very special organization or group of individuals locally right here in West Bloomfield coming together for a great cause. They're a quilting group and they're actually getting together very frequently at the Spirit of Grace Church in West Bloomfield for not only just to make quilts, but for those quilts to have a great, great purpose as well. So with us right here live on the splash to give us more details about this quilting group and what they do at Spirit of Grace, we have pastor of Spirit of Grace Church joining us right here, Joyce Partika Stive. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. So uh, first and foremost, Pastor, like I said, we do appreciate you. Once we saw this story, it was very, very interesting. But let's just start off with you just telling us in general. Tell us about this quilting group and how it got started at Spirit of Grace Church. So Spirit of Grace is a congregation that was developed almost 10 years ago um, from three different congregations merging together. Some of them were Lutheran and one of them was Episcopalian. The Lutherans had this quilting group and they decided that it was a ministry that they wanted to continue after the merger. And so these quilters continued to get together. So every Tuesday morning at about 930, they get together in our back fellowship hall and they just make quilts and laugh and join in fellowship together. That is so, so powerful, the fact that they felt this was important enough to continue even after that type of, uh, you know, uh, acquisition or merger, as you would say. So very interesting to say the least when it comes to that. But like these quilts, like we said, are not only being built right here in West Bloomfield, but they're being shipped off to a bunch of different places. Can you just talk about the impact uh, that you've personally seen from these quilts not only being built right here in this community, but shipped off to locations that's needed? So I think one of the great things about this ministry is that these folks really have relied on donations from the community. Mm. They are part of an organization called Lutheran World Relief that was founded by Lutherans in the United States at the end of World War II. Um, they decided that they needed to bring congregations together to do things to better the world around us. And so these quilts are sent to places that really need them. So they've gone to places like Turkey and Ukraine. They've gone to places like Israel. And they also stay right here in the United States for disaster victims. Oh, wow. So we're to literally a global type of <laughs> impact that we're making right here on West Bloomfield, sending it off to different countries, continents, and things of that nature, and to hurricane relief victims, like we said, that, that happened just recently in the uh, Florida uh, coast of the United States. So thank you for, for also explaining that, too. That's, that's very, very insightful. But one thing that you said that I want to kind of go back to very briefly is the fact that you said this uh, relies heavily on volunteers and donations. Talk about the help that the community can, can come in in regards to donating some items that are necessary to make this happen. So one of the things that you saw was that the quilters needed some sheets. The sheets provide the backing for the quilt. Mm. Um, and those are great. And one of the things that we have learned at Spirit of Grace is we can always count on the community to step in when they're needed. Yeah. And so they have provided um, fabric, they've provided yarn, they've provided sheets, they've provided batting. Um, that goes in between the two layers of fabric just to make sure that the quilt stays nice and warm. Yeah, and yeah. So the community has always stepped in to help. So we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And it's part of our job right here to not only have you on to explain this, but also put that word out. We are the channel for people. If you do have those gently used or used bed sheets that are still at least in good enough shape so that they can use those, please donate mm -hmm. them. And since we are on that, how and when and where could they donate these items if they do have them? So if you do have those items, our church office is open from 9 in the or 9.30 in the morning until about 2.30 in the afternoon. And then we're also available to collect them on Sunday mornings. The one thing I did forget to mention is that none of these quilters, or only one of these quilters is a member of the congregation. Okay. So this is really a community effort. Um, some of these folks have come from other congregations. Some of these folks are just people in the community who like to quilt. And so that's another way that we rely on the community. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Also providing a little bit more context for our quilters out there doing that great job. And with us right here live on the splash, by the way, from Spirit of Grace Church, we have Pastor Joyce Party Castive talking about the quilting group that they have with Spirit of Grace, how they started, 
what they do and the impact that they make, not only right here in West Bloomfield, but in the United States and globally all together. Now, we've already talked about the fact that you don't necessarily do the quilting yourself, Pastor, but I'm pretty sure that you've probably seen or witnessed any information or insight into in regards to how the process is done by chance? So it takes a lot of laughter. Um, these <laughs> women, I love listening to them from my office. They're always having fun together. So I think that's the first requirement. Mm -hmm. um, the second, I've been told it's pretty easy. Some people will sit and cut squares. Some people sew those squares together. Some people will make sure that the bottom sheet and the top part that they've just fit will fit together and that they're the appropriate size. Some people um, sit and pin so that the um, edging that needs to be done is done correctly. And some people will tie yarn just as an extra um, decorative touch to those quilts. Oh, nice. I would imagine each quilt has its own little flair and they're all not made the same. <laughs> of course, there's different material that we're getting from donations, different colors that we're getting from donations. So, you know, you just find different ways to be creative with it. And like we said, it's it's an art to it, too. It's not only just, you know, quilts. It's, it's art. It's, it's probably some type of therapeutic relief <laughs> also for the volunteers. Um, with, with that being said, essentially, on the other end of getting these donations, I know we're sending them out globally, but have you all ever received any thank yous, any feedback regarding, you know, the, the help or the impact that these quilts have made? So the thank yous that we do receive go to Lutheran World Relief okay. um, because they're the, they are the organization that passes these quilts out. Um, they are the organization that have their boots on the ground in places that need them so much. And so a lot of the stories that we have are from where they've gone and how they provided warmth and comfort to those who need it. Um, so a lot of these places are places like we're seeing in Florida and other places that just have been devastated, mm, yes. either by weather or war or whatever else. And so these quilts provide, um, sometimes you just need that blanket to wrap yourself around, mm -hmm. you know, to wrap around yourself. It's, it doesn't need to be cold outside to need that extra layer of comfort. I promise you it doesn't. <laughs> I don't care if it's 95 degrees in the summertime. I need a blanket. I always say I like to wrap up like a burrito in my cover, and <laughs> yeah. I just roll around. I just roll and around. So <laughs> people who are going through those difficult times mm -hmm. of losing their homes or losing loved ones or losing all of their belongings also need that oh, comfort. Good point. And I think the great thing about these quilts is that each of them aren't just made to go through the motions, but they're made with love and care. There is careful thought that go into what fabric match together and what colors fit well yeah. together. Um, and they're all made with just that extra sense of love that we all need. Yeah, and a little bit of laughter, like you said before. I just laughed earlier. I just made a quilt just by laughing like that. So, But yeah, no, that, that's a great point because we, any, we can go out and buy blankets. We can go buy quilts. It's a little bit different. I think it has a little bit more value because they are handmade by volunteers. They aren't doing this to get paid. So I think that adds a little bit more value to it that's, that's, that can't even be measured. So great, great that you even mentioned that and put that into perspective. From you, from you being the pastor of the church, any plans whatsoever to expand the quilting group or do more with it by any chance at all? They are always looking for new members. They always love the extra hands. They always love the extra help and the extra community that comes with it. I think one of the beautiful things about this quilt, these quilts is that you're not only seeing them sent across the world to places that need them, but the community that's created right inside the four walls of the church because of these people getting together yeah. to share gifts and talents that they have been given to make the world a better place. Um, so if people are looking to be a part of that community, please don't hesitate. If you have been interested in quilting, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us to get their meeting times and any contact information you need. Yes. Um, they're excited to expand their group. And we we sent 144 quilts this year. Um, and so we're hoping always to increase that number. 144 quilts this year so far? We must have like, 50 volunteers making quilts or something like that, right? Nope, five or six. What? Wow, <laughs> that's, my math isn't the best, but on average, that's at least 20 quilts per person, at, at the very least. That's crazy. 
<laughs> and they all work together. Yeah. Um, we are looking to have a workshop after church one Sunday where these women can come in and show us how they do what they do. Yeah, um, just yeah, yeah. so that we can see the process. Because every year in October, we end up um, putting some of these quilts in the sanctuary and blessing them before mm. we send them on their way. Mm. Um, and I think it's just a great thing that these people can come together and do this. I cannot take any credit for their work. I can't even take credit for them being at the church. Um, but I absolutely love the community that they formed and the way yeah. they've helped the church just reach out and make the world a better place. It's a very honorable thing. We got to appreciate that and love that. And as we talk into, I'm thinking about the blankets and the quilts that my grandmother made and crocheted for me when I was younger. Like I said, just doing things like that by hand, it just means so much more. Uh, just a few last things before we let you go, Pastor. First and foremost, uh, once again, any information to give out if anyone is interested in joining, signing up, or becoming a volunteer, finding out more information regarding that? So they meet on Tuesday mornings at 9.30, and they're usually in the Back Fellowship Hall until around 11 o'clock. Okay. Um, it depends on how much fun they're having that day. Um, and if you want more information, you can always get in contact with the church through Facebook, Instagram, email, or just looking at our website. Perfect. And any other exciting service initiatives or things just outside of this quilting group that Spirit of Grace has going on that you want to tell the community about? Sure. Um, Spirit of Grace has a diabetic food pantry that serves clients once a month, um, specifically clients who are in need of diabetic food supplies, because we know those can be expensive. Mm. Um, so we're always looking for donations. And on our website, there is a list of donations. If you're interested in doing that, there's also an Amazon shopping list. So that if you have time just to click on Amazon and send something over to the church, we'll get that and put that in the diabetic food pantry. There's also a blessing box that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right okay. outside the doors of the church. You take what you need, you leave what you can. And so we don't know how much food is passed through there because some people leave things and some people take things and it's just there. Um, we also have a couple projects coming up. We'll have Thanksgiving food baskets that we put together for some of the families in West Bloomfield. We get those names um, through the school system. And then we also have our annual Christmas dinner. We hand out Christmas dinners on Christmas day. Um, so it's a drive through system. You tell us how many meals you need and we give them for you as long as we have them. So much going on, so many different services, programs. But for the most part, if you're listening on 89.3 Lakes FM or watching on CivicCenterTV.com, just know that it is there to serve the community. And we appreciate you for that. Once again, from Spirit of Grace Church right here in West Bloomfield, Pastor Joyce Partikastai, we appreciate you and your time. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for all the donations and the help that the community has given.